Hello guys, welcome to my new video, even though I'm relatively tired, I'm super, super excited to be talking about this increase because this, again, the hype, there is a reason why people are talking about this increase because it is so fun and it is so good and honestly, I've been testing it out lately and using multiple different covenants in terms of, to determine which one I'm going to go with when Shadowlands is released and let's go to this video and this video is going to be covering legendaries, gameplay styles, certain talents that I like, certain things that I don't like about discipline and let's go and have a look at the play style. So first of all a lot of people are going to be asking what has changed to, for discipline priest and honestly when it boils down to the certain changes, the certain legendary nerfs, at the start of the beta you'll notice that there used to be a shadow world death legendary that made shadow world death part of your rotation actually did atonement transfer that has been nerfed. Shadow World Death is still there, but it's not really an impactful healing cooldown any longer. So keep in mind, what has really changed? When you think about it, the main addition is going to be Mind Blast, that's actually going to be part of your rotation. It does cost a lot of mana, but in Mythic Plus Dungeons, because of Prideful, you get a huge mana boost. It's not going to be too big of an issue. You get Power Infusion, and honestly, Power Infusion is a lot bigger than most people think, because it synergizes with a certain legendary that works really, really well in Mythic Plus, and we'll talk about that very soon. And then you obviously have your Covenant ability, which we'll talk again, which is the best for Mythic Plus, which is the best for raids, and you have better ways of dealing with certain affixes and things like that. So, which Covenant am I gonna go in Shadowlands? First of all, there's definitely a big debate right now between Ventir, which you can see right now, and that is Mind Games, and Kyrian Ascended, or Boon of the Ascended, which, the way that I'm going to approach this, I've tested both in Mythic Plus environment, I've experimented with them, and the way that I'm going to categorize them is Boon of the Ascended, 3 minute cooldown. Mind Games, 45 seconds. Mind Games is generally going to be something that's going to fit better in raid environments because it is 45 second cooldown, it synergizes with Schism, and you have this kind of rotation that, again, in Castle Nacha, maybe there's going to be damage every one minute, Mind Games are going to fit in, in those windows, or your burst windows. That's not saying that mind games cannot work in Mythic Plus. I do feel that at a certain level, mind games is actually more than good enough, or actually to some point, any Covenant ability is more than good enough to deal with Prideful. And Prideful is going to be something that's going to be really annoying at higher keys. So mind games, great in raids, can be used in Mythic Plus up to a certain point in my opinion. That's This is where Kirin comes in. And Kirin is the one that you really, really want to talk about. And Kirin ability is legitimately something that's going to give you a huge burst. It only is going to last 10 seconds. So if you mess it up, that's three minutes of your life gone type of deal. So generally speaking, Boon of Descendant, it's going to convert your existing abilities into something else. So all of a sudden, once you press Boon of Descendant, which actually has a cooldown or at least cast time, Boon of Descendant is going to go into Ascendant Nova and this is going to be like an AoE damaging ability, AoE heal that you can kind of spam and it's gonna give you stacks if you hit enemies. Those stacks at the end are going to determine how big your burst AoE healing is going to happen and that's going to be called Ascended Eruption. Now the most important part about this is that when you activate bonus of the Ascended is that your smite is going to change to Ascended Blast and this blast is gonna do huge amount of single target damage to an enemy it's going to heal a person, and it's also going to do a huge amount of atonement transfer. So just to showcase Boon of the Sand, you'll see that once I activate it, it'll have a cast time associated with it, that my Smite is going to change to Ascended Blast, and my Boon of the Sand is going to change to Ascended Nova. So notice my Ascended Blast. It has a cooldown. So I can go in and use my AoE heal, AoE damaging ability, while also using, making sure that my Ascended Nova or Blast is also being used. And generally speaking, this rotation can change. It can change based on how many mobs you're facing. It can change on whether you want to add more DPS or maybe more healing. Maybe you're using different type of talent builds. Maybe you want to try and squeeze in Schism in there. Again, I'm not 100% certain of the best rotation on how to optimize this ability based on all scenarios, but it is really interesting and it can be a huge boost to your healing while dealing with Prideful. So why do I use this three minute cooldown? And I feel this Kirin ability is going to be something that a lot of people are gonna be using to battle, to battle Prideful, really high Prideful, because you'll notice that at high levels, Prideful is going to be really annoying, especially that, for example, you don't want to sometimes commit too many cooldowns into a Prideful because you're going to be fighting boss next time or boss is going to be a next fight. So maybe you just want to use your boon and then you're going to be using your shadow fiend or you're going to be using your rapture for the boss. Or again, maybe you want to commit multiple cooldowns. There's also an interesting aspect of the boon of the ascendant in terms of the ascendant eruption. 
explodes for up to a certain amount of arcane damage to enemies and healing to allies within 15 yards based on the number of targets. And this is how Blizzard deals with these AoE abilities. To the same extent, if you are using Mind Seer on an AoE pack, it is only going to transfer a torment from the first target hit. And this is how Blizzard tries to make these AoE abilities not to be super overpowered when dealing with a torment transfer. And the same kind of deal is going to happen with Boon of the Ascended, Ascended Eruption. It's only going to transfer on the first target hit. So technically, if you are facing a Prideful, it's only going to be one mob. It's going to deal its full damage to that one mob. And that one mob is going to transfer atonement healing. It's going to be a giga amount of atonement healing. If you're using Ascended Eruption on a multiple targets, there's going to be less damage done to each target or per target. So technically, the atonement transfer is going to be less. So you have to make your decision. How do you want to use these abilities? And this is why Boon of the Senate is so great on Prideful Weeks because, or Prideful Affix because there's only one mob and you're going to be doing a ton of Atom and Transfer at the end of Boon of the Senate. And now if we go down to Mind Games, which is a 45 second cooldown, it is very relatively easy to use. Again, it can be buffed by Schism. This is why it's very good or very popular in raid situations because Schism is probably going to be a go-to in raids. Twist of Fate is probably going to be a go-to in Mythic Plus. Twist of Fate is actually insanely strong in Mythic Plus because it has saved my life so many times, especially during Prideful when I've fallen behind and all of a sudden I get this both. And again, if this combined with Kyrian um, Boon of the Ascendant, you are getting some insane power off this. And I do feel Twist of Fate is really good because again, Schism received certain nerfs. So if you are running it, let's say in raid situations on Mythic Plus, if you are running mind games, it is very easy to use. You just, want, you just want to make sure your torments are out and you just basically press it. It's going to deal a ton of shadow damage. Keep that in mind. Yeah, shadow damage. So it does synergize with Shadow Covenant if you want to go for a safer healing build. This is more of an aggressive Mythic Plus build that I'm going here. You can see that Mind Blast entering a gameplay rotation here. You can see Power Infusion. And the reason I'm using Power Infusion is going to give us into the next segment. Legendaries. And Mythic Plus Legendaries, honestly... It is kind of weird that the best legendary Mythic Plus is going to be Power Infusion also grants you 100% of its effect when using an ally, meaning that you can actually use Power Infusion of somebody else. And you, basically two people at the same time are going to have Power Infusion. And this is something that I thought was going to be a bit of kind of a gimmick because it makes, again, sometimes if you're doing random pokes, people might not even realize you're using Power Infusion. But honestly, this is such a cool utility tool in organized environments where people know exactly what's going on. Maybe boosting your, D maybe your DPS is about to use some dps cooldowns and you say hey do you need power infusion it's going to increase your burst even more and all of a sudden organized groups not only this priest is going to provide good damage good healing it's also going to provide insane insane utility through power infusion in raid situations in terms of legendaries i'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to go with clarity of mind during rapture power word shield costs 20 percent less mana and applies six second longer atonement again the mana reduction is not that big of a deal in mythic plus situations because prideful has huge mana boost that you get after you kill it in terms of raids this is going to be pretty big and combined with the fact that evangelism is also going to be something that you're going to be using it has a lot of synergy and it's going to be probably a go-to legendary now well, you watch this video and you're like what's going on there is a huge decisions to be made are you going to go mythic plus are you going to go raiding if you're going to go mythic plus you're probably going to go with kyrian how do i categorize it differently if you're going to go Mythic Plus really high prideful, or you're going to push really hardcore Mythic Plus keys, you're probably looking at Kyrian as the number one choice because of the Boon of the Senate, because I don't care it's streaming at cooldown. The biggest issue at high Mythic Plus is going to be dealing with prideful, and any kind of cooldown is going to be invaluable. Now, if you're not looking to do these really high keys, you probably can make any Covenant work. So why not try out Ventir? Or for example, if you're focusing on raiding, Ventir is going to be one of the best options. And Ventir, from my testing at least, was a very decent option in Mythic Plus as well. Maybe it doesn't give you this huge burst that Kyrian give you, but it gives you 45 second burst windows, which again, can be very decent. So overall, my suggestion is that pick what you're going to do. Pick your poison, Mythic Plus, raids, or maybe an in-between solution that is going to give you a decent results. At the end of the day, in terms of the gameplay, I honestly found it insanely, insanely interesting. I thought of these abilities, like for example, Mind Seer, like I mentioned, is only going to do a torment transfer from the first target. So you might be using Mind Seer just to deal damage or provide more DPS. You'll be utilizing other players by giving them power infusion. You'll be constantly dealing damage. You'll be constantly providing, again, in Mythic Plus, a lot of the times you have to make a huge decision. Are you going to be playing defensively or offensively? 
By defensively, I mean you're going to go and revert back to Shadow Mend healing. That means that you're going to be trying to provide players with single target healing because they're going to die. A lot of the times in raids, you're just going to go with offensive build where you're going to let your atonements do most of the healing. So there is a lot of differences in terms of the plays that you're going to do. I don't really like the defensive playstyle all that much. I like when atonements can do most of my healing, but in Mythic Plus, that's not going to be always the case. Most of the time, you will have to be like, hey, this guy's 10% HP. I have to heal them with my Shadow Man because my atonement healing is not going to be substantial enough to prevent them from dying from the next burst. So keep in mind, very two different playstyles. In raids, you might have some other spot healers helping you with those single target, how do I say, people who are going to be able to die. So at the end of the day, Discipline Priest honestly felt insanely fun. It was so interesting to make a decision whether I'm going to play defensively or offensively, whether I'm going to be buffing certain members, how do I optimize DPS, for example. Healing on the move is relatively good because you do have things like penance, applying your Shadow World Pains or Purge the Wicked when you're moving or maybe applying shields. It is genuinely a really, really, really fun playstyle. And don't get me wrong, Priests have gone a lot better in terms of dealing with certain affixes. All of a sudden your Master Spell, which has a 45 second cooldown, can remove Bursting Stacks, which is Believe me, it is insane for those affixes. Also, the fact that Grievous stacks now fall off from direct healing is also a big, big plus. All the sudden priests and especially discipline priests is going to benefit a lot from this. The fact that their best legendary is going to be something that is going to provide utility to your raid or your group members in five months is a big plus because your healing and DPS is also going to be good enough to keep up with all the other healers. So all of a sudden, you have a lot of utility, you provide passive DPS. You might not be the best DPS healer, but you deal damage in the most convenient way. Your healing is very, very strong in terms of pure HPS. Your utility, like I mentioned, is very, very decent. And you're also extremely fun, especially for players who enjoy healer damage. I just feel Discipline is in a really good spot and I hope it's not going to get nerfed too hard or it's gonna stay this, the way that it is. Keep in mind, there's already been nerfs to Spirit Shell. You have seen a lot of spatial nerfs and I feel like Blizzard is kind of panicking in terms of not making it too overpowered in raids where in raids you could have multiple shells from multiple discipline priests and they kind of cap the absorb on it and honestly I feel like Blizzard wishes they could completely remove spirit shell and start off with something new because balancing absorb talents is so so hard. So generally speaking, I feel Discipline Priest is going to be an excellent choice in Mythic Plus. I feel Discipline Priest is going to be an excellent choice in Raids. The Discipline Priest strength is going to be directly related to the amount of time and effort you put into this healer. It is an insanely high skill cap healer. It is a proactive healer. You need to know the damage patterns. But I feel like if you can master Discipline Priest, everyone in Shadowlands are going to want you. They're going to friend you. They're going to invite you to groups and you're going to be a real asset in Shadowlands. Guys, let me know how you feel about this. I'm very, very impressed and let me know if you're going to be playing this Priest when Shadowlands launches.